Hi guys, today we are going to install HUD or head-up display into 2019 Toyota RAV4. As you can see, this particular one is uh, integrated into the speaker cover, which goes on top of the dashboard. There are two wires, one coming from uh, the HUD and there is a second one that will connect here and will be connected uh, under the dash to the vehicle. It's all plug and play, so you won't void your warranty because you're not cutting into any wires. So a little bit later we'll show you all the installation details and uh, we'll show you features and functions of the unit. If you guys like the product, uh, there is a link in the description. So we completed the installation. Uh, we will show the actual process a little bit later. But right now we just want to show the result of the work and uh, what the HUD can do. So one more time. You can see there is a one speaker car on the right side. And this cover was on the left. And now instead of it you can see the HUD. So we had to install the reflective film in order to be able to see the picture without doubling. So I'll show you, for example, if you see on the, at this angle, you can probably tell that uh, it doubles in the glass, the image. And this reflective film prevents that from happening. Uh, though the issue might be when you apply the film, it's a bit tricky to get rid of all the bubbles and uh, get it on uh, evenly. So we're still considering whether to leave it or not. Right now we can see uh, kilometers per hour. Also down below you can see the uh, tachometer graph. I'll show you. So we can see how it changes when we press the gas pedal. So the next one would be uh, miles per hour. Uh, we can see the coolant temperature. Right now it's 69 degrees. This is the voltage of the system. Uh, this setting shows you the uh, fuel consumption in uh, liters per hour. This one only shows when the car is in motion and it shows you the fuel consumption in liters per 100 kilometers. So now we are back to the speed. Now we are going for a short drive and we'll show you guys how it looks like uh, when the vehicle is in motion. So once again we can see the difference uh, between reflection on the film and uh, the reflection on the glass. Uh, these are miles per hour right now. Temperature again. Okay, this is a fuel consumption in uh, liters per hour and uh, liters per 100 kilometers. It's actually more accurate than the original scale on the original display. Right now, when you don't, don't press gas, it's only 2.5 liters per 100 kilometers. Way more accurate. So these are the main values that the device has. As you can see, I think many of these can be really helpful when you drive. And uh, the right couple, like the voltage and the uh, coolant temperature that you won't necessarily find in the vehicle settings as well. So overall, we think it, this device can be pretty useful. This is how it looks like at night. Uh, it has dimmed automatically, so it's not as bright right now. It is pretty accurate, but uh, it doesn't 100% uh, match uh, the vehicle data. 
for some reason you can see there is a little bit of variation between the HUD and the data on the dashboard but it's really close one thing we want to mention as well is that the speed of the HUD may not uh, necessarily match the actual driving speed of the vehicle uh, the reason being is uh, this device also have a warning if you speed too much it will give you a warning so it could be five kilometers higher than the speed of the vehicle and there is a way to synchronize that for that you will need to press the minus button press and hold it so now you can do the adjustment so for example let's say when you drive at 20 kilometers per hour uh, the HUD shows 25 kilometers per hour so in this case you have to press the minus button five times so now when you are done with that you will have to press ok and it will remember the setting if it's vice versa is for some reason uh, the speed is not synchronized and it's less than the actual driving speed uh, you have to do the reverse so far I deducted five kilometers and uh, I'll reverse it and I'll add five kilometers back by pressing the plus button so when you are done with the adjustment just press OK button and it will remember the setting uh, we will unscrew three bolts on the steering column one two and three uh, later we will take off partially two panels uh, underneath i will show you how to do this and the last step we will remove uh, this uh, speaker cover So there is fission wire finally we got proper position. Now I will connect, gently connect the, our head up unit cable to the fission wire.
Yeah, so we got it. I'm going to reroute this cable uh, behind the steering column. So it will go through this point up, up to here and finally I will get it somewhere here. And the last step I'm going to pull it out here. I will use one zip tie to fix it to the mechanic to uh, this steel bracket over there and I will use the rest of it to connect further to the displayer. So this is our point of interest. Uh, this is connector will be removed and T-splitter should be installed first and this next step last step. So this is actually fuse here. So we hear sound. It works. So it's initial in initialization. It should turn off very soon. Yeah, that's what we expected. Okay, so it should work. Now we have enough room to finish installation. Enough cable. All zip ties secure. And it's time to reverse assembly. This plastic bracket actually staying on the way, so we cannot use it, and we will try to remove it first. Yeah, so looks like it's optional for different models. Well done. 